Hello everyone, um, trying out a little new um, setup today where we can record video and record the sound on my nice shiny blue, my nice shiny blue snowball microphone. Before I get started um, on this video, I wanted to give a quick shout out to YouTube users uh, Shadowversity and Scalagrim. Not that they really need a shout out from us, we're tiny compared to them, but um, they did inspire this video. Um, both of these users, they talk about medieval weapons and castles and things. Um, and they, they also uh, both have series where they talk about the fantasy, fantasy weapons and, and fantasy castles and just how realistically, how well they would work in, in a realistic setting or in, in realistic battles. So this video is all about the chain sword and whether it's ever a weapon that someone would actually realistically want to use on the battlefield. Now the chain sword is in my opinion the most iconic weapon in 40k. Some people might say it's the bolter, um, but I say it's the chain sword because boxy machine guns have been around in sci-fi pretty much as long as you know war based war themed sci-fi has has really been a thing or as long as that gritty kind of grittier more grittier war sci-fi has been a thing um but the chain this idea of taking a, a chainsaw and like form reformatting it like a sword and then having someone actually carry it out into into a battlefield um is very much more a thing that was popularized by 40k it's still a lot less common in other settings. The settings that it is used in tend to be very, very obviously inspired by 40K. You know, even things like Gears of War and the, the chainsaw bayonet type attachments they have on their weapons. It's 40K, um, Gears of War clearly has a lot of influence from 40K in terms of the visual design elements. So yeah, in my my opinion, it's one of the things that it's really kind of iconic of 40k. It's just you know such a brutal weapon too, um, for a for a setting that's that's kind of very over the top brutal. It's very over the top. So I think it's one of the most iconic weapons for the for the series. But is it at all anything anyone would ever actually want to use in a battlefield situation? Um, now, people who would be saying, you know, that, that it's that kind of writing it off instantly is, no, of course that's not practical. No one would ever want to use that. I think that one of their big arguments would probably be that it's never actually been used in real life. Um, and that no, nobody's ever really, really tried to use a chainsaw as a, as a you know, proper weapon of war before. Um, and that is true. However, the reasons for that, the two biggest reasons that I can think of for that aren't really related to how well a chainsaw type weapon would work as a melee weapon. They're actually for other reasons. Uh, the, first one, the first and biggest reason is that melee weapons were pretty much already on the way out by the time a chainsaw had been invented that was at in any way practical to use. Um, there was a hand crank bone saw called the osteotome um, that, um, that was invented in the 1800s, but the first really, um, the first powered chainsaw that, that was portable um, did not exist until 1918. That's of course right around the time period of World War I. And World War I was the really the last war where any sort of melee weapon was used in any, in any great extent. Um, you know, people still, they still had bayonets, you know, and they still made extensive use of bayonets. They still used cavalry charges with sabers. But if you do research on World War I, you'll know that a lot of the tactics were actually very outdated for the weapons technology of the time. World War I and even the Civil War, the American Civil War, if you go back to further back to that, um, these were warfare, this was warfare where the technology modernized faster than the tactics that were being used. 
which is one of the reasons the casualties in these wars were so horrific. Um, yeah, bayonet charging and, and, and cavalry charges with sabers are not really something you want to do on a modern battlefield. Generally, in, in modern battlefields, you don't want to focus on melee combat at all. And, and even then, you know, the, a bayonet is obviously a very light, very lightweight, very easy to carry, very kind of secondary weapon. Um, whereas chain, a chainsaw type weapon would be the opposite. It would be big, it would be bulky, it would be heavy. Anyway, we'll get into that later. But people just don't bring, armies just don't bring melee weapons to the battlefield anymore. Um, never bring a knife to a gunfight is a saying that exists for a reason. It just does not work with modern modern firearm technology. But in 40k, obviously, um, melee is a thing people still do. And it's really just one of the more fantastical elements of the setting, that you still have, um, have characters charging around the battlefield with an axe in a universe or they have laser rifles and machine guns. Um, so when you're analyzing the practicality of the chain sword, you really have to add a big asterisk next to that where is it practical as a melee weapon um, against other melee weapons? Because if you look at how practical it is versus a machine gun, of course it's gonna lose. Um, and, and all the melee weapons in 40k are gonna going to encounter that they're going to you know going to get taken out by a missile or whatever um but we just kind of have to roll with it and assume that you know melee works in this universe so as a melee weapon is a chain sword any good that's the question we really need to ask and then another reason that i think that um the chain sword has never been a, a nobody has ever attempted to use the chain sword is because it just seems unnecessarily brutal for real life. I mean, let's remember, again, going back to World War I, um, they had these chemical weapons they were using during that time, things like mustard gas and stuff, and they ended up being banned um, through the Geneva Convention because the way they caused deaths was just considered too brutal and inhumane, which is saying a lot because the whole point of war is to kill your opponent, your, kill your enemy. Um, but these weapons were considered to do it in a way that was too cruel. Um, and I think a chain sword type weapon would run into that too. Um, you know, <laughs> as, as nasty as we, like, we, as we often think humans are, um, very few of us are that degree of out and out sadists. And a chain sword would be a very terrible way to die. And kind of unnecessary for, for, for killing a human being with the weapons technology we have right now. So I think that people just haven't attempted it because unless you're, you're some, you know, some weird sadist, it's not necessary and it's, it seemed just unpleasant. But we're just talking about how practical it would be taking out any kind of, you know, any kind of worries about that, obviously. And the grim darkness. Um, obviously, people aren't really worried about being humane in their warfare. So, the, let's look at the chain sword itself, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of it versus something like a normal sword. Now, big disadvantages right off the bat. It's going to be bigger, bulkier, and heavier than a normal weapon. Um, a normal weapon of its of its size, a normal sword. Even if we're assuming that this has, you know, metals that are more lightweight and also stronger than metals that currently exist today, which you know, 40k does have things like ceramite, you know, these fictional metals that we're assuming are better than the metals today. So, so presumably they can get this thing down reasonably lightweight, so that it's not really as much of a pain to lug around and swing as it sometimes look like looks like it is although weapon size in in art the artwork can be a little inconsistent and weapon size in the actual game tends to be a little oversized um 
but presumably they can get this uh, fairly lightweight with fictional metals but it's still not going to be as lightweight as a normal sword made about the same size um, and also there's of course the problem of mechanical failure you're going to have, have to worry about this thing jamming you're going to have to worry about parts breaking it's just a lot more complicated of course you're going to have to clean the thing after every time you use it too um, so those are those are the disadvantages and they, they, there are pretty serious disadvantages uh, compared to a sword um, a sword is just a, a lot easier to lug around and to use and to clean up after a battle and to not worry about something going wrong with it, some sort of, some sort of part jamming or breaking or something. Um, however, there are some advantages to the chain sword too. Uh, a chain sword is going to do a lot more damage when it hits. You know, it's kind of unpleasant to think about. But uh, but it's true because a chain sword isn't going to give this nice clean slice, which is what like a normal bladed weapon does. Uh, a normal bladed left weapon just kind of slices through and it just separates the tissue of whatever it hits or separates the material. Um, a chain sword doesn't really cut in a normal way at all. It's it's not really a bladed weapon. You can't you kind of have to consider it in its own class when you're thinking about that because a chain sword actually digs through whatever it hits and it pulverizes a portion of whatever it's cutting through that's about as as thick as the chain. It's just it just shreds through that part and that part is just gone. There's like a, a gap about about this much. In whatever it's cutting through, this just gonna be gone. So if you're talking like think about stitching something up, stitching a wound up. Something's cut with a normal blade, you can just you know you can you can pull the wound together, give someone stitches, and wait for it to heal up. Because really the the um, the actual skin and the muscle that's been cut, it hasn't none of it's been lost. It's still there. It's just been severed. With a chain sword, you can't do that because there's a, a gap of about this much. It's going to just be missing. So in terms of the amount of damage the wound is going to do and how more how much more difficult it's going to be able to to heal from it or to to medically treat it, it's going to be a lot tougher when you're dealing with a chain weapon or a chain sword. Um, so that's something to consider. And another thing to consider that a chain sword, an advantage a chain sword would have purely from uh, is this good at killing things standpoint, it's a lot res less reliant on the physical strength of the user when it comes to actually cutting through the target. Um, now you do require some physical strength to swing the thing around and to actually catch something that's moving and doesn't want to be hit. Um, but once there's that impact with the actual chain. Um, a chain sword is going to cut based on the momentum, the tremendous momentum that the spinning chain has gotten going for it. Um, and that's where all the power comes from. When you watch, you know, when you watch like loggers work and they're cutting something with a chainsaw, you notice that they're not really swinging as hard as they can and all the force coming from their arms. They're just kind of firmly pushing down with it because all the cutting power is not coming from their arms. It's coming from that spinning chain. So the actual cutting power of a chain sword isn't going to be dependent on the physical strength of the user. And that's a really big point to remember. Um, so, so the, what it all boils down to is that you uh, a less strong opponent, a less strong wielder of a chain sword can do a lot more damage than they could with a normal sword. I was thinking about the 40k universe and possible situations where the advantages of a chain sword would outweigh the disadvantages. And one thing to remember is that in the 40k universe, chain swords have been around for a really long time. Um, 
just human chain swords. We'll get into some some of the other racist chain swords in, in uh, at the end of the towards the end of the video. But human chain swords have been around for a really long time. They've been around since before the Emperor's Great Crusade, since before the Imperium thing. Basically, when the Emperor started his Great Crusade, chain swords were already pretty widely used. Um, so I was thinking about it and like, why would chain swords be so popular with you know humans in space and the pre 40k i guess we would call it universe and i was thinking you know there's some alien races out there that the chain sword strengths would really work well against might overcome their weaknesses um one of those is the tyranids they've got some big beastly things that you would need to do a lot of damage to take down um, that it would be difficult to do up close, but but Tyranids weren't very widely known about by humans before you know the current time period. But the other big race that comes to mind is orcs, and orcs, well, they're bigger, stronger, tougher than humans, and they really like to fight up close. And there tends to be a lot of them. They are the most common race in the galaxy. Along with humans, they're first and second relatively most common races in the galaxy. And orcs love to fight. They're pretty much always hostile. So, it's easy to imagine that what happened was, um, as humans explored the galaxy and spread throughout space, they encountered a lot of orcs. Orcs would be the most common alien race they encountered. So you've got all these orcs running around the galaxy. They're significantly stronger and tougher than humans, and they're also very resilient. They heal really well from wounds. Um, so basically, my sort of fanion uh, when I was thinking about this of, of how chain swords developed is um, as humans explored the galaxy, they they fought a lot of these orcs, and the chain sword became something that was developed as a kind of equalizer because its advantages it does a lot of damage. And it's not as reliant on the user's strength. So it helps cancel out the orc's natural physical advantage over humans of being tougher and of being able to take much worse wounds and heal up or keep fighting. Um, so because orcs were so common and because chain swords were such a, so good at being an equalizer against them, it spread throughout the galaxy. So... That's basically, I think, the most realistic way to justify the existence of the chainsword and its widespread use by humans is that it developed very early while they were exploring space and became a weapon to use against orcs. And it was good enough at that that they, it became a very popular weapon. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the ways that the chainsword is a redesign of a normal chainsaw because um, there's some of this stuff that would actually make it a better weapon and there's some of the stuff that is is not so good um, the chain swords first of all obviously the mo size of the motor that powers the thing has been reduced a lot which is good um, you really don't want to be lugging around that, that heavy motor that's bulky and going to get in the way while you're trying to use this thing as a weapon. Um, they've obviously kind of, kind of reformatted it to be swung around like a sword because the handles of a lot of chainsaws, if you look at them, if you see how they're used, they're hauled in such a way that you don't really swing them like, they're not really designed to be swung like that not comfortably um you just kind of move them sideways or straight down but these are designed are holds so that you can really get that leverage and swing them around like so um which i think is overall pretty good redesign because again you're going to be on a battlefield you're going to be trying to hit things that don't want to be hit um and they're going to be trying to dodge you and block you so being able to swing it around faster like that get, gives you more mobility. It's pretty good. Um, an interesting thing about the chain swords is that while they do have they do have double sided chain swords, the standard chain sword always has just one side of the chain exposed, and the other side is actually blocked off by this metal thing. Um, and and um, that's interesting because you know with a normal sword when you're forging it. 
making it two-sided, making blades on both sides is, you have to make a very conscious choice to do that, and you have to put in the work to do that. But with a chainsaw or a chain weapon or whatever, um, the chain is always going to go wrap completely around. Um, that's just kind of the nature of how it's made. So blocking off half of it would have to be a very conscious choice. So why would they do that? Um, well, thinking about it for a little while, I decided it actually makes sense if you want to make the thing more practical to carry. Okay, so when you've got this, that when you've got this chain sword, you know you're obviously you're not going to want to carry it in your hands when you're you're in a long campaign, you're marching around or whatever. Um, but how do you carry this thing? You can't just use a normal scabbard, like like a um, like a sword. You can't just use a normal scabbard. It's gonna get stuck. You've got this spiky chain. You've got this spiky chain, and it's going to get stuck in there. Um, but yeah, the best way is still to wear it on your on your um, waist, you know, somewhere on your belt, so that you can. Um, draw it easily, but it's just tricky to, to get something that draws it easily. Well, I thought of a couple ways to do this. Um, you could have some kind of fancy holster where it basically snaps in, and you would really need that dull back side for this, because you need a place where you can lock the sword in um, without, you know, the ch that spiky uneven chain, you know, that's not going to lock into place right. Um, so you would just snap the back dull part into like this holster that holds it like so. Um, or if you want a simpler way to do it, you could just have like a leather strap um, and just, you know, put it through. I made a little drawing of it, but you just put it through the handle and you hold it just by the handle or like a latch that holds it just by the handle. Or because it's the future, maybe they have some kind of magnetic holster and you just magnetize it to you right there. The thing is, either way, no matter what you do, you're probably going to have the chain exposed still. Um, so you've got the chain exposed, and it's up against your leg. Now, the thing is, if you've just got the front exposed, it's a lot easier to walk and move around without the chain jabbing into your leg and cutting up your pants and stuff. Or if you're in armor, it bashing against the armor, and it's kind of the opposite problem the um the chain's gonna get kind of bent out of place and dull maybe um if you've just got the front though if you hold it right if you put it right here on your leg or on the back of your leg your leg's not perfectly flat it's rounded so when it swings at a normal walking pace it's just going to be swinging into the air it's not really anything in front of it now when you run, that's kind of a different story because your legs kick out in front of you. But what, what you could do is you could just, you know, hold your hand down in a pinch right here, hold it in place so that it doesn't, you know, stab you. But when it's on both sides, you got the blit chain, it's, it's, you're twice as likely to, you know, to, to ding yourself. So my theory was just that the one-sided chain swords are there for more easier carrying. Another thing that they did um, that i um, that they did that I'm not sure is such a great idea with the chain sword is they have this instead of having the chain kind of outside running around they have this sort of external casing metal casing that kind of surrounds the chain and I don't know you could say that's to keep the chain from you know coming off the track um, or whatnot to kind of protect it um, I'm still not sure whether that's a great idea or not because it also means that if the chain does get something stuck in it or gets jammed or whatever, um, it's going to be a lot harder to unclog than if the chain was just whirring around, you know, just outside of the of the mechanical structure of it. Um, and it also means that it's going to be a lot harder to clean. You got to take the whole thing apart to clean it. Um, also, the, uh, a funny, funny thing, thing about, about the chain sword design, design, the com most standard, standard chain sword design, design they, they give it, they, they make it come to a point on the back. back. It's, it's almost kind of like shaped like a machete, like a machete or, or something, and they've got it ang the tip angled, um, which is a really kind of odd design choice given that the back end, again, is, is just encased in, in flat metal, flat unsharpened metal. Um, 
And that, that makes this really, really bad, bad at stabbing things. <laughs> so it's got this, it's sloping forward this, this, this part at the tip. Um, and it comes to a point in the back, which is really what makes it bad. It would actually be better if the if it was curved like a normal chainsaw, because then you'd get the chain would would start cutting. If you decide to you know stab someone with this, like the front of it, if it's curved, then you get it's gonna start the chain's gonna start cutting into them and get some some momentum going, um, because because it, it's got a bit of that chain to actually make contact with them. Um, the way that chain stores are usually designed, though, instead, there's just going to be this, barely this tiny little spot on the tip where it actually will cut into them. And this whole part on the back here, this whole part that's encasing it, you got a whole bunch of dull metal. It's going to be, imagine like taking a measuring stick or a yardstick, taking a little exacto knife blade, like taping it to that, and then trying to stab through one of those, um, one of those like type of realistic targets they use on like Deadliest Warrior or one of those sides of Pig or whatever. Um, it's not going to go very deep before all that dull metal stops it and makes it very hard to, to push through again. So this design is actually kind of uh, limiting the effectiveness of the chain sword in my opinion it's making it makes it less good at at stabbing things um, I think this is clearly something they picked just because it, it, it they thought it looks cool okay so that basically covers the chain sword itself actually oh and the two-sided chain sword that's one advantage that, that the chain sword that goes all the way around would have over the the one-sided chain sword is it would actually be better at stabbing into things um, but that basically covers the chain sword itself. The uh, as far as it's how practical it is, some of the some parts of its design kind of um, kind are kind of uh, less practical and more designed to look cool, make it. But the whole concept of a chain sword, I feel like you can kind of justify more so in the 40k universe where there are these you know tough aliens that are bigger and stronger than humans and and heal up well. Uh, compared to real life, you can kind of justify the existence of a chain sword um, and say that it would serve a practical purpose as a weapon. A couple of other things I wanted to, to just handle at the end of this video. First, chain axes. Chain axes are actually a huge step down um, in terms of being a practical weapon than a chain sword, in my opinion. And the reason for that is. The whole advantage of an axe over a sword is that you get a lot more swinging power from it. You get you get more leverage, and you've got more weight on the end. Um, so basically, when you chop with an axe, it it hits harder. But a big advantage of chainsaw or chain sword versus a normal sword is it's not reliant on the user's strength. It's reliant on the momentum of that spinning chain. So really you're, you're, the advantage you're getting from turning it into an axe is something that it's, is negated by the kind of weapon it is. And a chain axe, you're limiting the amount of space you can hit something with that ch whirling chain that again you used, to the, you used to do the cutting. You're limiting it, you're cutting it by like at least half. <laughs> um, so, so now you have a smaller target area you can hit and you don't really gain any advantage. Um, so I actually think that the chain axe is a much less practical weapon than a chain sword. And then the other thing I wanted to address is um, alien races using chain swords, Xenos and stuff. There's basically two main alien races that do. There's the orcs and the Eldar. Um, now the orcs, it's kind of actually pretty easy to explain. The orcs basically adapt human ideas and human technology or steal them all the time. Um, and so, so my theory for how that would work in the 40K universe is the orcs, you know, humans, as they start fighting orcs, they realize that these chain swords work pretty good against them. So they start getting popular. And then the orcs see them and they're like, oh, these things are loud, they're choppy. They're basically the kind of thing we like. So orcs just go and go and steal chain swords and start using them. Um, 
for more because they they think they're cool than than anything really they would they being bigger and stronger they would actually gain less benefit from them so would space marines but you could argue it's a traditional weapon by that point um than normal sized humans fighting larger opponents um and then the Eldar, it's a little less easy to explain as them, um, as them copying humans, because far too snooty for that. Um, but you can argue, I think, that Eldar probably just kind of developed these on their own. They probably wouldn't have shared them with humans either. It wouldn't be reversed, because they're not really, in, Eldar aren't really into sharing their technology with lesser races. But probably the Eldar just developed something similar to a chainsword for the exact same reason that humans did it's so this whole sort of parallel evolution idea that when conditions are right and something is the best tool for a job um basically two different civilizations can invent the same thing of course in the eldar's case it would presumably be made of better materials technology more refined because they were more they're more advanced um but they basically came up with the same thing for the same reason it's a good weapon for killing orcs or other large tough alien graces um that's just kind of my thoughts on the chain sword. So I think that there is a certain certain logic you can apply to it. I don't know if they had any of that in mind when they invented these things back in the 80s. For all I know, um, they just they just thought it was something that looks cool and was, you know, suitably radical or grimdark or whatever. But you can certainly apply a certain logic that kind of justifies it within the universe. Um, even if it's not, even if the design, the specifics of the design aren't perfectly practical. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on the chain sword. Um, I don't know, if people like this video, I may do some other 40k style weapons. You know, I was thinking of doing maybe like something on the monofilament knife or the, uh, um, no, or monomolecular knife, uh, <laughs> or the, uh, the bolter or, or some things. Um, may do that if people like this video. Anyway, that's that's it for now. Um everyone take care and I hope you enjoyed.